Today, I wanna to talk about the major short selling ban petition that I think could end up enforcing a short selling ban market wide. I wanna explain why the SEC may need to do this for their own credibility and potentially for re-election purposes too. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, InvestorTurf has tweeted about the investors calling for a temporary ban on short selling in the United States stock market. This article says that numerous retail investors and companies are urging the SEC, regulators and the government to implement a temporary ban on short selling within the American stock market. Saying this demand stems from the significant financial losses experienced by investors, amounting to millions of dollars attributed to synthetic short selling. And saying furthermore, companies are facing dire consequences, being pushed towards bankruptcy and forced to delist from exchanges due to these exploitative practices. In just 2023 alone, more than 30 publicly listed companies have taken proactive measures by conducting investigations into their stocks to uncover instances of abusive synthetic short selling. A majority of these investigations had revealed imbalances in share quantities, and the SEC acknowledged the persistence of naked short selling as evidenced by charging an investment advisor for orchestrating an abusive naked short selling scheme in 2023. The SEC charged Savvy Management LLC and its managing partner Howe D. Mintz with fraud in connection with naked short selling. And also, South Korea has been charging many US investment banks with the exact same charges. Elon Musk also spoke on short selling on CNBC, saying this is something the SEC should have done, but curiously did not. Meta News and a bunch of other Twitter profiles have tweeted the official link to the change.org petition to ban short selling, and I'll leave that link down in the description below. Also with change.org, this is a separate website that's been around for donkey's years that doesn't collect the private information of retail investors. Change.org is the petition website where pretty much all petitions go through. But Meta News has also tweeted saying South Korea did it, so can the US do it as well? So obviously you may know that South Korea recently banned short selling market wide with a blanket ban to appease retail investors ahead of parliamentary elections next year. Now what's interesting is that South Korea banned short selling to appease retail investors after a very similar petition to the one going around right now. But what's also interesting is that South Korea have done this due to parliamentary elections next year. Obviously, the current government wants to hold that position for another sitting, and therefore they need retail investors on their side. Let's remember that US elections are also next year as well, not just Korean elections. And you may find it interesting to learn how Gary Gensler got his role at the head of the SEC. Gary Gensler was actually nominated by President Joe Biden to serve as the 33rd chair of the US SEC. So far, Gary Gensler has done absolutely nothing to stop synthetic short selling. So ask yourself, would you vote for Joe Biden again? Or more specifically, would you vote Democratic if you knew Gary Gensler had to serve as the head of the SEC for another four or more years? Now, obviously, I don't want to turn this channel into a political channel, and I've always strayed away from the politics. But ask yourself, would you want Gary Gensler to head the SEC for even longer? Or would you potentially want entire SEC reform and synthetic short selling actually being banned? I also wanted to quickly recap today's trades from the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group as today was an absolute banger of a day. We went three for three, profiting on all three trades that were called out. Our best one of the day was CDIO, which ran in total 76%. CDIO, as I touched on this morning, hit a pre-market high of $1.36. It ran up when the market opened, cooled off a little bit during the midday hours, and ran up again towards the market close for a whopping total gain of 76% and the group absolutely smashed it. Moses made around $160 in just a few minutes. G Khan made around $300 in a few minutes as well, and he only joined the group on Friday. This is his first day trading, and he made around $300. Doc Holiday also smashed it, buying in at $1.76 and selling at $2.16. 
And if you guys want profits like $300 in a matter of a few minutes or total gains of 76% in one day, be sure to join the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group linked in the description below. And what's interesting is that South Korea may even extend this short selling ban if the reforms are not enough. Saying South Korea may extend its total ban on short selling of stocks beyond June next year if reform measures are deemed insufficient. And it says retail investors in Korea had called for the ban, arguing that the trade practice gives unfair advantages to institutional and global investors. And it also says in the same article, but for some reason I couldn't see it, saying South Korea is considering several options to penalize illegal short sellers, including banning them from stock trading for up to 10 years. That is something I could absolutely get on board with in the US. If banks, hedge funds, market makers or anyone else is caught illegally short selling stocks, a flat out 10 year ban. That would, in my eyes, absolutely solve synthetic short selling and I'm sure earn many more votes in next year's elections. And I think if this petition gets too many signatures, the SEC will be flat out forced to issue a blanket short selling ban for their own credibility. So far, this petition only has 3,800 signatures with 2,000 people signing it today. But I think we can absolutely get this petition well over 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, maybe even 50,000, if not even higher. Realistically, all retail investors concerned about synthetic short selling should be signing this petition. And as I said earlier, I'll be leaving the link to this petition down in the description below. Now, Stefan has said that he believes the SEC will be forced to use Rule 804A4 to stop dark pool trading at any time now. He believes what's prevented them so far is lack of evidence against short hedge funds that would actually hold up in court. I believe we now have an abundance of actual evidence that would hold up in court and he said that currently withholding the FTD records actually suggests they've gathered that evidence. We know the first half of October FTD data has still not been released, but somehow the second half of the month's data has been released already. And when a Freedom of Information Act request was submitted, they turned around and said the information cannot be provided due to a few different reasons, likely revolving around potential litigation. Maybe the SEC or whoever it is actually has this information and data and evidence that would actually hold up in court now. And maybe Rule 804A4 will actually be implemented if the SEC actually decides to do anything to save their credibility. Something else I found interesting is that Wells Fargo is reportedly grappling with regulatory obligations to enhance its monitoring of financial crime. You may remember a few weeks ago, a lawsuit was recently resolved placing responsibility on these brokers and trading platforms for what their clients are doing and what kind of crimes they're committing. So now these brokers, trading platforms and likely banks as well are forced to review in more detail what their customers and hedge funds are doing and if they're acting illegally. And it seems Wells Fargo is trying to grapple with these new regulatory obligations saying regulators have issued formal orders to Wells Fargo instructing the bank to bolster its ability to detect and prevent criminals from exploiting its accounts or products, saying the orders primarily focus on the bank's consumer watching systems. A recent lawsuit alleges that the bank allowed a $490 million Ponzi scheme to operate. So as you can see, even these banks are now responsible with what their clients are actually doing and if their clients are operating Ponzi schemes or likely illegally short selling stocks too. So even these major banks like Wells Fargo and maybe Bank of America, who's the prime broker for Citadel, are being forced to crack down on their customers, such as customers that are hedge funds operating $100 million Ponzi schemes. Finally, as Peruvian Bull tweeted, you may remember this quote saying it's entirely possible that we're in a completely fraudulent system. As I said, we know synthetic short selling happens, we have an abundance of data, but so far the SEC has done nothing. Either the SEC is trying to put all their ducks in a row, ready to bring that litigation, or it's entirely possible we're in a completely fraudulent system. 
If you don't know this quote, it's from the film The Big Short when Michael Burry is waiting for those mortgage bonds to go to zero when the housing market has already been collapsing for some time. In the film, those banks refuse to mark his mortgage bonds accurately or his credit default swaps on those mortgage bonds accurately until they themselves had secured a net short position. Maybe these banks are trying to acquire a net long position in AMC before the SEC actually announces its criminal punishments. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.